Hello booktube, it's Saturday afternoon, I've had the day off, and well it's sort of late afternoon, it's just after 5 I think here in the UK, sorry I'm still sweating, um, I went to the bookshop this afternoon, again, I went telling myself I'm only going to buy 5 books, 5 books, if they're 5 1 pound books, that's 5, 5 2 pound books, that's 5, if it's five books that are 50 pounds each, that's fine. Well, I, yeah, well, you get the drift that it was going to be five books. I came home with 12. So that didn't work out. Well, I wasn't expecting to face three full bookshelves of this size, the Billy bookcases, packed full of really good Zulu war books. I wasn't I wasn't prepared for that I have about 10 to a dozen that are on there uh, and basically they're all f perfect books they're all uh, they're all recent uh, publications uh, uh, Green Hill Press uh, yeah this is Penguin uh, you know um, uh, Pen and Sword that type of thing uh, nothing antiquarian, sadly. Um, I do like my antiquarian uh, books, and I like the Zulu antiquarian as well. But uh, I bought 11 um, Zulu war books, so hence the title of this. This is a war book haul. Uh, so it's another shot from HMS Bedford, but it's a very specific shot. Uh, because, yeah, 11 books on the Zulu War. Well, let's get to it. Let's get to the one that's not uh, Zulu. Uh, by the way, everything here was, was, like, it was all off the shelf. So I only got one bargain book. The one, the first one I'm going to show you was a pound. Everything else with my discount, uh, I think they averaged, like, you know, uh, six pounds and a little bit each. So it's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Um, and I just... I would have bought them all, to be honest, if I have space, if I had the space. I don't have any space for these, but I was quite choosy. A lot of the titles I'm familiar with, uh, but most of them I haven't read. All the ones that I have here I have not read, but I was familiar with a few titles. But let's get to the non-Zulu uh, War book, and it is a, not quite antiquarian, but it's an older book. It's faded on the spine a bit. Uh, as I say, it was a pound. It is uh, publications of the University of Manchester. It's Economic History Series number seven, the Cotton Trade and Industrial Lancashire, sixteen hundred to seventeen eighty, uh, by Alfred P. Wadsworth and Julia De Lacy Mann. Prince, uh, she's principal of Saint Hilda's College, Oxford, and it was published in nineteen thirty one. It might be beyond my abilities uh, with the economic aspects, but for a pound, I couldn't pass it up. I'm sure I'll be able to get something out of it. Um, even so, when I get around to reading uh, uh, it, when I don't know, but for a pound, I couldn't pass it up. So that was the one pound book. Now, I got like just two piles here spread out. Uh, six in each, I guess. Or no, no, five and six. So let's just go from the top. And I'll spend a little time maybe reading. I'll see how that goes. Of what the... It's both. This is Zulu Warriors. Uh, the Battle for the South African Frontier by John Leband. Uh, a big name in... In... Um, uh, South African Zulu studies. Uh, this is... Uh, Yale University Press, published 2014, and it's a bit faded maybe? No, maybe not. It just looks faded on the spine, but it's not, because it's the same as that. I think a couple of them are a bit faded, but that's fine. Uh, this is from the jacket. The Anglo-Zulu War, the most famous of Britain's late 19th century campaigns of colonial colonial conquest was not fought in isolation. Along with the two Anglo Petty Wars, the Ninth Cape Frontier War and the Northern Border War, it was one 
it was won in a brutal series of interconnected and overlapping wars which the British waged between 1877 and 1879 to crush and disarm the remaining independent black states of South Africa. For the first time, this book weaves the story of the cl this cluster of conflicts into a single connected whole, deftly fusing the widely differing African and European perspectives on events. John Laban probes the fateful decisions taken by statesmen and military commanders, and now analyzes uh, military operations and their destructive impact on combatants and civilians alike, and explores why so many Africans chose to fight as auxiliaries and le levies alongside the British instead of against them. Highlighting the uh, starkly contrasting military cultures of the antagonists, Laban shows how prevailing notions of military honor and manhood inspired and sustained uh, African warriors uh, in the doomed defense of their homes and independence. And it says, uh, John Laban is professor of history at Wilfrid Laurier University, Canada. He used to come into my bookstore. So that's, um, that was kind of cool. Um, but anyway, let's go on from there. Um, and a fellow of the University of the Kawa Zulu Natal, an honorary professor of history at Stellenbosch uh, University in South Africa. He is the author of many books on warfare and military culture in Africa, including The Rise and Fall of the Zulu Nation, The Atlas of the Later Zulu Wars, uh, The Transvaal Rebellion, The First World War, Historical Dictionary of the Zulu Wars, and Bringers of War, the Portuguese in Africa during the Age of Gunpowder and Sail from the 15th to the 18th century. I've got about three or four of those, I think, so I've got this one now. Uh, so that was, that was quite nice. It's got... Uh, black and white illustrations and two inserts. Uh, there's uh, that's a photograph of Isan Dewana uh, taken in June 1879. This might be only of interest to a few um, uh, booktubers so uh, I do apologize but it is a very um, selective uh, book haul here. Um, Todd at Todd's Bursting uh, Bookcase I think uh, will enjoy this. I hope so anyway. Um, this one I don't really care for. It's a little gaudy for the cover, but it looks pretty uh, pretty good. One I've never seen before. Um, Fearful Hard Times, the Siege and Relief of a Showe, 1879, Ian Castle, Indian Knight. I don't have anything on a Showe as far as I can remember. So that's why I got it. And it's Ian Knight, so he's another uh, biggie in this. This is Green Hill Books. Uh, Ian Castle and Ian Knight, Green Hill Books, London, 1994. And it says, on the morning of 22nd of January, 1879, the forces of Colonel Charles Pearson's right uh, flank column confronted part of the Zulu army in the first major battle of the Anglo-Zulu War. The battle fought on the hills... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, got some water here. <sighs> yes, that is water, not vodka. Um. Anyway, uh, the battle fought on the hills overlooking the uh, Nyazine uh, River in Zululand's coastal belt it was a British victory, but it proved a deceptive start to Pearson's operations. Uh, elsewhere in Zululand on the same day, another British column was disastrously defeated at Isan Dewana. And it's just going, Fearful Hard Times is the first full-wink study of the siege and relief of Ishawe, using both official and private sources, including many previously unpublished diaries and letters. It explores the personalities and experience of Pearson's command. The opening battle of Nyazane is uh, graphically described with the numerous raids, ambushes, and skirmishes that characterized the subsequent fighting around the besieged, besieged post. When relief came at last, it was the result of the first British offensive since the uh, reverse at uh, the Wana. Uh, it was on the, the Shawe relief expedition that the British army introduced techniques that would ultimately win them the war. Uh, yeah, so, as I say, this, <coughs> uh, this looks 
quite good and since it's um, um, first one yeah um, yeah just as Ian Castle and Ian Knight are well-known authors on the subject of the Angles of the War this is the third book they have written together they also jointly uh, operate trips to the Zula battlefields yeah Every sort of January, you can go, uh, Ian Knight runs this, uh, this tour of the battlefields. Uh, I don't know if it's still being done. It's, it would be something that would, I'd just love to go, but it's very expensive. But he also sells, uh, books occasionally on his website. Uh, and also you can buy, if you want, a Zulu, uh, knob carry or, uh, uh, the short, um, um, uh, not swords. Um, see my mind. Uh, sorry, but anyway, you can buy uh, authentic Zulu uh, weapons and things like that that he that he's picked up in South Africa. Some of them are sort of more modern, but um, some of them are authenticated that they were actually from the time. Uh, they're kind of pricey, obviously, uh, but but interesting stuff. Uh, and there's a whole list of titles here on the back, like the, the Road to Us on Dewana, which I think I might have in here. Um, yeah, so that's that's another nice one. Crossing the Buffalo, the Zulu War of 1879, Adrian Greaves. This one is faded a bit on the spine. That's the one I was thinking of. Um... 2005, Weidenfeld and Nicholson. Uh, the Anglo-Zulu War was one of the most dramatic chapters in British colonial history. It began with a simple border dispute between the Boers and the Zulus. The British, who were supposed to be acting as impartial referees, uh, were in fact looking for an excuse to invade. In January 1879, after engineering a series of grievances against their Zulu neighbors, the British army finally crossed over the Buffalo River into Zululand. It was an open act of war. Uh, what happened next would rock the very foundations of the empire. Within just a few days, a force of 25,000 Zulu warriors uh, had overwhelmed the main invading forces at Isandawana, slaughtering and ritually disemboweling more than 1,200 British troops. It was the worst defeat uh, a modern army had ever suffered at the hands of men without guns. So it goes on from there, and it's got a lot of photographs as well. Uh, that's uh, King Setsueo uh, at the bottom there at the time. I think uh, Todd had a biography of Setsueo that would be that looked pretty good. I don't have a biography of him. Uh, now there's uh, some heavy duty machine guns for the time or any time really. Um, and then there's drawings uh, of fighting. So yeah, there's another one. Uh, this is in Zululand with the British throughout the War of 1879, Charles L. Norris Newman. This is Green Hill Books again. This one I've been aware of. I've seen it, but I have not read it. Uh, Green Hill Books. Uh, 1988. It's probably one of the older ones that's here. Uh, it's got maps, sketch of the Battle of uh, in Edze. Uh This is, yeah, the uh, in Zululand with the British is a classic eyewitness account of the Anglo-Zulu War. The author, Charles Norris Newman, was a man of action and a writer who had uh, remarkable insight into contemporary attitudes. His account of the first phase of the famous campaign is the only one by a professional journalist, and it Includes descriptions of the massacre at Isandawana and the heroic uh, defense at um, Rourke's Drift. But yeah, this was uh, originally published 
1879. So uh, it's but it's the it's an 18 or 1988 uh, reprint of it, which is still pretty good. Uh, let's put that down here. Uh, oh, I thought this was another uh, Green Hill, but it's not. Uh, it's Lord Chelmsford Zulu Camp Zulu Land Campaign. 1878-79, edited by John P.C. Labond. It's the Army Records Society. Uh, it is Alan Sutton publishing uh, for the Army Records Society, 1994. Uh, well, it's a reprint of a lot of stuff, but it's don't think it was in book form before this. Uh, thousands of documents relating to Chelmsford's direction of the Anglo-Zulu War survive. The 116 documents selected for this volume will uh, emanate from the general, all emanate from the general, general himself, rather than his many correspondents. Chelmsford thus speaks for himself, exposing his plans, decisions, problems, and disputes to the closest uh, critical assessment. The documents cover all key aspects of his conduct of the campaign, including his strategic planning, tactical intentions, logistical problems, inadequate field intelligence, and conflicts with both local authorities and his superiors in England. The inescapable conclusion must be that there was such, there was much in Chelmsford's uh, generalship to criticize, and little to commend. Nice little drawing on the back. So, and more of the sort of same, the Zulus and the Matabili, warrior, na warrior nations. So it's a very brief outline of, of both, uh, both nations. Uh, this is Arms and Armor, Publications, uh, 1998. Uh, so, yeah, just Warrior Nation. Glenn. Glenn Lyndon Dodds. Uh, this is a story of the two great warrior nations that held sway in uh, much of southern Africa during the first three quarters of the 19th century. Based on recent scholarship, and uh, it presents a lucid, authoritative, excuse me, and enjoyable account of the history of the Zulu and the Matabili nations from their rise to power uh, in the first half of the 19th century to their downfall in white, at white hands, as the century to, uh, drew towards its close. It takes the readers into the places of power and on the fields of battle and features some of Africa's most enduring heroes. Uh, and as the book begins with a discussion of the reign of Shaka and highly controversial founder of the Zulu nation before moving on to the reign of uh, Degani. Uh, which uh, witnessed bitter fighting between the Zulus and the migrant Boers and engagements such as the epic battle of uh, Blood River. So, and it goes on, but uh, that gives you the gist. Uh, there's, uh, uh, this, this is uh, Utamuni, nephew of Shaka, by uh, drawings on the back here, and a young Matabili. Warrior in eighteen nineties, young Matabili warrior in eighteen nineties, and Uta uh, Uta Muni uh, up here, and the front was shown as saying "Saving the Queen's Colors: Battle of Isandawan, eighteen seventy nine, by Alfonso de Nuvo de Nouvelle, Nouvelle. So That's actually a nice cover. Uh, okay, now we've got Zulu again. Surprise? Uh, the Heroism and Tragedy of the Zulu War of 1879 by Saul David. And you might recognize, I don't know, it's, it looks like the same, same guy. It must be the same artist. It looks very similar. Um, uh, one of these is signed, yeah, this is signed by Saul David. And the Zulu, uh, well, it's a Viking publication 2004 first printing 
Uh, the Zulu War of 1879 was the most controversial and brutal British imperial conflicts of the 19th century. Yet, as Saul David reveals, this war, which needlessly cost thousands of lives, has even a darker side. As a preemptive strike launched against the Zulu kingdom of King Setsueo, uh, who had no quarrel with the British Empire, the war was supposed to turn a host of uh, disparate colonies into a South African confederation. But from the start, it did not go to plan. A catastrophic early defeat at Azawanda left 1,300 dead in Lord Chelmsford's invasion strategy in tatters. Only the heroic but tactful and insight- insignificant defense of Rourke's Drift the same day saved uh, Chelmsford's, Ch- Chelmsford's job. And uh, that, ha- and that and a cynical cover-up uh, deflecting the blame elsewhere. What had been planned as a short, sharp strike to destroy Zulu military power became a protracted and expensive war that dragged on for months with political reper- repercussions that helped lose Disraeli the 1880 election. So there's a nice old map of uh, sketch plan of Ithan Dawana. Uh, as the end papers. And there's three inserts here of pictures uh, of five or six pages each. So yeah, that's kind of nice. nice as well. Uh, the Wedding Feast War. Uh, the final tragedy of the Kosha people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird name. It's uh, as far as, I, I'm pretty sure something like Kosha. It's got it. It should have like an exclamation mark at the beginning of the of the word, of the name. Uh, and there was a great big. Uh, I think it was called Frontier something. I still want to get it. It's a it's a massive book of a history of the Kosha, uh, which which I'd love to have. Uh, this isn't so much Zulu, so we're going on a different track here a bit. Uh, this is uh, Frontline Books. Uh, by Keith Smith. I'm not familiar with this one, uh, but anything about the Kosha uh, I'm interested in. So, 2012 says this book serves as a prequel to the Anglo Zulu War, which followed in 1879. Some units uh, and their officers fighting in both wars, prominent among them was the 24th uh, 2nd Warwickshire Regiment under its command officer, Colonel Richard Thomas Glynn. Um, his officers' names may also be familiar. Uh, Major Henry uh, Barminster, Pauline, Captain Russell, Upcher, Lieutenant uh, Tegmouth, Melville, and Lieutenant Neville Coggill, uh, were those of whom uh, later fell at Isundawana in a new light. The 90th, 90th Regiment also survived in South Africa during this time, bringing with it yet another Zulu War uh, illuminary, Brevet Colonel uh, Evelyn, Evelyn Wood, VC. Here too was to be found Brevet Major Red Redvers Buller, the 60th Regiment, the King's Royal Rifle Corps, soon to become the formidable warrior, uh, leading his beloved Frontier Light Horse among those who survived during the war as leaders of the Colonel uh, African forces, colonial African forces, uh, were such Zulu uh, war figures as Rupert Lonsdale, who also later commanded the 3rd Regiment of the Natal Native uh, Contingent, uh, at Esundawana, William Nettleton, uh, future commandant, commandant of a battalion of the uh, Native uh, Natal Native Contingent, and Frederick Schurmbrocker later served with uh, Wood and Natal. I was getting a little detailed there, but uh, um, uh, but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a prequel thing to the wars, but uh, I got it especially because it's about the Kosa. Uh, now we're back to Zulu uh, themselves, Zulu frontiersmen, uh, Major G C G Dennison, edited by Ron Locke and Peter uh, Quantrell. Uh, this is Frontline Books. 
published 2008. Uh, Riveting tale of frontier life in 19th century Africa. First hand recollections of the Anglo Zulu and Boer Wars. Moving descriptions of the besieged towns of Ladysmith, Kimberley, and Mafeking. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the Zulu. And uh, it says, it was said of George Dennison that he had seen more active service in South Africa uh, than any other living man. An eminent soldier cast from a co uh, colonial mold of bitter experience. He was also a frontiersman equal to, in standing to any legendary figure of the American West. So what is, yeah, sorry, I, I, this one I'm totally unfamiliar with. Uh, so yeah, so it's his writings, I take, I guess. Yeah. This is edited by, yeah, it's, it's his, it's his sort of diary and writings, I guess, of, of his time, uh, the Zulu Wars and Boer War. That could, that could be interesting. Um. And here is the road to Isandawana. I do have one. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't think I have this unless it's been uh, done in a different edition. But or I might be thinking of the road to Rourke's Drift. But I, sure, I have one called the road to to Isandawana, But it definitely looks different. It's by R. W. F. Uh, Drew Gleaver, and it is Green Hill Books again. It's Colonel Anthony Durnford in the Tal and Zululand, uh, 1873 to 1879, uh, 1992 publication. Uh, it says, Colonel Anthony Durnford uh, has received much of the blame for the disaster of Isan Dewana in the Anguzu War of 1879. Was it justified, or was he a convenient scapegoat for the incompetence of higher officers such as uh, since he was no longer alive to defend himself. Durnford arrived at a Sunwanda camp with his column after Chelmsford had already advanced uh, and decided to make a sortie in search of what he believed to be a minor Zulu force threatening Chelmsford's rear. He discovered it was not a minor force but the main Zulu army, which chased after the retreating native horsemen uh, towards the exposed camps. Or camp. Uh, the lines of defense were soon broken, and the camp destroyed. Durnford fell on the field, and the inconclusive evidence on his actions threw his reputation already doubtful into the realms of controversy. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's that. And now a uh, bio of Shaka Zulu. Um, the Rise of the Zulu Empire, E.A. Riddle. Well, it's not, not so much, I guess, a bio, but uh, 1955 originally in 1971. So this is actually the oldest one, other than the reprint uh, aspect. Uh, this is it's a book club, book club associates, uh, 1971, uh, originally 55, as I say, but yeah, it's, it's faded a bit in the book club, but oh well. Uh, E.A. Rivers, Shaka Zulu, the great biography of the Zulu king. Uh, whose achievements uh, rivaled those of the contemporary Napoleon okay, in Europe as established himself as a classic of African history. Shaka was born in 1787, the illegit illegitimate son of a minor chieftain. Branded with this shame, he strove even harder to execute the rigorous duties uh, required of Zulu youths, youths uh, excelling in everything he undertook and soon proved himself a uh, born leader gathering about him in an area lo no larger than Rutland, the nucleus of some 500 untrained tribesmen. He built up an immense army of skilled and highly disciplined warriors, conquering and pacifying a, a territory larger than Europe, all in the space of 12 years. So yeah, so um, there it is. That's my book haul, my Zulu uh, war book haul. Uh, and yeah, um, I have up on the top of, the, of, of this bookcase, the three bookcases wide, um, so three three shelves, 
of uh, of South African history. It's not our African history, I should say. It's not all South African. But as I say, I could double that easily by getting everything that's in the bookshop. But I just, I don't have the space um, as much as I'd love to have it. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, I'm at 30 minutes. I hope anybody who made it this far, thank you. Uh, I know it's very... Uh, narrow uh, book haul, but uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you.